So what makes up a chart? One way to conceptualize data visualization is to think about data visuals as comprising data types, visual attributes, and marks. In this way of thinking, marks are components of shapes whose attributes such as size, position, color, can be used to visually encode data. Understanding data types is important. How we visualize data needs to fall in line with our conceptualizations of continuous or categorical data, otherwise it won't be effective. But also our visualizations can't be arithmetically false. Placing averages over ordinal or nominal data may not make sense. In understanding marks, we can think of point, line and area as the component parts of shapes. And these are what we want to graph in our visualizations. Many tools will have the basic shapes, um, triangles, circles, and squares, polygons and arcs, text and images as foundational elements too, um, that can have their height, width, and scale modified. Data binding or data encoding is the mapping between a mark's attributes, position, size, color, yeah, texture, all of that, um, and data. And this data can be constant or variable. Our visual encodings can then be layered, separated, joined to create different views, composition, and become interactive to add additional contextual information. Our visuals can be themed to be more aesthetically pleasing or more easily read. Now that we have our building blocks, how do we build a visual? So rather than looking at our data and our data types and then choosing from a predetermined chart library, we could think about potentially um, ways to build a visual up from its component parts, which is most suited to our data. And I'll talk a little bit later as well as also drawing from inspiration and then and other things to help build that up. But here I'm just going to go through a simple process. It won't produce the most amazing chart at the end or necessarily one that makes total sense, but um, it's the process of building a chart up from component parts. Um, and here we can start with a single point, right? So um, off, represented by an open or unfilled circle. And then we're going to um, encode the position horizontally with data. In this case, um, we're using a dates field to record horizontally. And then using another dimension, I'm going to encode again the marks by position uh, using a values field. Um, and there's some tools provide ability to encode um, position with angle and set values or geoencoding as well. I have another dimension that I want to add, and I will pick color as the attribute that I will uh, change with data. And where I've used point marks um, to represent raw values and encoded these um, attributes, position and color with different dimensions, I, I might now want to be looking at, rather than just the raw values, you know, the averages of these um, values. And to do that, I would probably want a different mark. And um, in this case, I might use a line mark to represent those averages over time. And I can layer the two on top of each other. And with that, the chart is getting very busy. So I might then want to think about um, trellising or you know, using small multiples to break out those subcategories of data, in which case I've chosen to do that by a um, dimension that has left the color redundant um, because I've now encoded with that dimension twice. Um, but in this case, you know, I don't mind. I, I quite like to keep that color in to, to make it stand out a little bit more visually. And so I have raw values and averages. I might also want to do some more statistical transforms and look at things like interquartile ranges or probability density. I'll represent those visually and perhaps um, join them 
onto subplots so for easy contrast. There weren't too much in the way of interactivity, except perhaps add additional context with tooltips. And then I might fiddle around with the aesthetics, font, color, grid lines to achieve a certain outcome. And whether that be affiliation with branding, better visual appeal, less clutter, consistency, or whatever else that the end goal might be. You might have our building blocks, but to build effective novelty, um, they need to be wisely encoded. And an understanding of how accurately we can interpret visual variables and aids this. Um, so in this little graph to the left, we can see that, um, you know, we can perceive differences in position um, better than we can um, differences in angle or colour, for example. Other things to think about, so whether some encodings are better for different data types. Um, so we know that colour value is very poor for nominal data, but it's great for ordinal data, for example. You might also want to think about whether there are individual differences in perception to be aware of. The most notable um, that comes to mind um, for everybody is people with colour vision deficiencies, but there are other things to be conscious of. Similarly, are there visual distortions or illusions to be cautious of? So are we chopping um, the length of bars off um, along the y-axis, for example, and um, misleading our consumers? And to seeing bigger differences than that are, you know, and are we creating this um, skin tone to grow effect to the left here um, that can be very distracting for end users. And we also might want to think about the colour choices we use, you know, how do they impact our emotional and visceral responses, um, and then how does that then impact decision making based on the visuals we produce. And did you hit the brief? Have you communicated everything that needed to be communicated? Too much or too little? Once we understand our building blocks and we have an understanding of differences in perception, we can start to think um, a bit more visually. And one of the ways that we can be creative in data visualization is to gather inspiration from the natural world or from the data itself. And um, one of the easiest um, ways to, to think creatively or be creative um, is to sort of use a process that I, I like to call visual on a meta pain. That's, um, that's a lack of having a, a better word for it. Um, and here's an example of that, for example. So um, we can see that there's a uh, report on um, cherry blossom seasons in uh, Japan. And they've used um, inspiration of cherry blossoms um, to create their chart. And we can see here that we have flower shapes as point marks. Um, and these have the visual variables of color and opacity. But these aren't encoded with data that they're constant. Um, they're encoded by position though. They have um, placement of these points are uh, encoded horizontally by year and vertically by month and day. There's also a line mark with constant colour and thickness and an area which is variable. Um, I presume that there's no interactivity. Um, the theme has no typical grid lines and a deliberate colour palette with very long bump on the dates for a reason that remains unknown to me. So we're about to start looking at the tooling options um, for creative visuals in Power BI. And just to reiterate what we've sort of talked about so far, um, you know, we, we know what the building blocks are to build up a visual. We know that to be creative, we can take the old to rearrange them into new ways or combine them in original ways. Um, we need to be daring, but old and different. Um, we can gather inspiration from the data itself or the environment. And then we just look at what appropriate tools we have available to us.